tonight on Q2, frustrations boiling over. If it's that fine, you come out and drink it. Water woes continue at a Billings mobile home park despite a year of constant complaints, plus a troubling trend. The feeling right now is that yes, we are dealing with teen violence um, that we're not used to seeing. Another shooting over the weekend involving Billings teens. Tonight, a look at how these kids are getting guns and what can be done about it. And wedding worries. To have that ripped away from me was one of the hardest parts of this whole wedding. A favorite Billings venue surprisingly shuts down for good, leaving many planners to scramble. Your MTN News at 10 starts right now. And good evening, everyone, and thanks for starting your week with us. I'm Kagan Harsha. Well, first tonight, a trailer park with a very murky future. Would you drink this water? Most of us wouldn't, but residents at the Metal Ark Mobile Home Park near the Billings Landfill continue to be told, yes, this water is safe to drink. And they say they've now been dealing with water like this for nearly a year. Tonight, our David J checks back in on the situation as residents say in some cases, things have actually gotten worse. People living at Haven Park have been concerned about water for at least a couple of years now. They're told that it's safe, but they don't think that or see that when they turn on their faucets. Some days water comes out looking like this at Gary Devereaux's home. It's not every day and sometimes it does clear, but Devereaux and others who live here are concerned, especially after being told repeatedly the water contains no harmful bacteria. It's not edible. It's not good for you. It's not healthy. And you can look at it and see, and I don't even let my dogs drink it. Devereaux says the water in the Metal Ark Mobile Home Park has been coming out dirty for about two years now. It's been back and forth, like you've seen. It, it was tea color, and it started coming out a lot darker. And sometimes it's like mud. When it's not like mud, he still drinks bottled water. Haven Park Communities, which owns Metal Ark, says it has checked filters, flush valves, and cleaned the water lines and tanks. The park has its own private well and is not on city water. A Haven Park spokesman says the company cannot find the problem and will now bring an out-of-state company to find a solution. He went on to say, Haven Park completely understands the concern of residents and has been doing all we can to repair the filtration and sediment issues. While visually not up to expectations, the water has been tested and proven to be safe. And residents say the Department of Environmental Quality hasn't been able to help either. We do our normal compliance every month, and every month, like I said, they are satisfactorily meeting the requirements. Lisa Kaufman says the DEQ tests for bacteria and not sediment, such as sand, iron, and manganese, often found in well water, which she says can look bad but is not harmful. Things that cause taste and odor and aesthetic quality issues do not have health effects, which is why they aren't regulated. But Devereaux says it does not take much common sense to know this isn't safe to drink. He claims um, he gets rashes and burns when he showers. I should let everybody out here suffer for as long as they have and ruin our clothes and, you know, come down with illnesses and everything else. They need, they need to be held accountable for it. Residents here are now taking matters into their own hands hoping to clear up the murky mess with a newly created Metal Ark community group. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Well, as we just told you, this water situation is something residents say they've been dealing with for nearly a year now. It first captured the public's attention back on January 20th when residents spoke with MTN. The Montana Department of Environmental Quality then got involved. Inspectors were out on site Monday of January 24th doing tests on that water, but officials ultimately determined that despite its color, yes, the water was safe to drink. Well, fast forward to February. Haven Park Communities, which owns Metal Ark, said the well system was starting to show its 60-year-old age and the water filter systems were being replaced. They said those filter systems could take up to a few weeks to fix the issues. In May, they then sent a letter promising all of those upgrades had taken place. They told residents they did not have to pay that month's bill. However, now, more than three months later, as you can see, the problems continue with no end in sight. Well, now to another troubling trend, and this one involves billing teenagers caught up in gun violence. On Saturday, an 18-year-old allegedly opened fire on the billing's rims, shooting two other teens. This on the heels of yet another shooting involving an 18-year-old on Friday night. Our Jackie Coffin takes a closer look at all the violence and perhaps one part of the solution. Two weekend shootings, the latest in what appears to be a wave of teen crime. I sat down with Billings police to see what they're seeing on their end and get fresh numbers on crime throughout the valley. 
the feeling right now is that yes, we are dealing with teen violence um, that we're not used to seeing. Billings Police Lieutenant Matt Lennox says there's a lot of community attention right now on teen arrests and recent shootings, but it doesn't translate to an increase in crime. So we are actually below where we were last year. Sergeant Lennox says the number of shootings in Billings is actually on par with the past couple of years. We've seen 35 so far this year compared to 38 on this same date in 2021 and 32 in 2020. But the number of shootings is up significantly from before the pandemic. In seven recent shootings over the last month, Billings police apprehended suspects ages 18 or younger in four of the cases. So we are seeing teens with guns more common than, than we used to in years past. Uh, and they're getting guns from a, a multitude of different areas, right? So uh, they are getting illegal firearms that they're either buying that are stolen or trading or however they're, they're obtaining them. We do have that aspect, uh, but we also have the aspect where they're just getting firearms from their residences, uh, you know, have guns that are not locked up. Behind the weapon, the crimes, the violence is a list of difficulties teens are facing in the post pandemic era. We see, um, you know, teen suicide, um, self harm, um, just violence, um, mental health. Juanita Sanchez is the director of teen services at the Boys and Girls Club of, of Yellowstone County. At the Boys and Girls Club, Sanchez and her team have created a safe environment for teens out of school. We try to provide different activities for the kids to get them off the street, to be able to introduce them, like I said, to different opportunities. Sanchez and Lenick agree that front end services like the Boys and Girls Club can keep kids out of trouble and off the streets, but they need more community support. I think a lot of what we have going on stems from the lack of services. I think that although Billings is a very supportive community and there are some resources, I just don't feel like there's enough resources. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Meanwhile, a suspicious death in Lockwood has generated a call to action on social media. Marshall Hankinson's body was found inside his bedroom two weeks ago, but the 35 year old's family says they're still waiting to learn how he died. They're convinced foul play was involved. Our Kelsey Marison is looking into this case. A Lockwood family is pressing for answers after they say their loved one was badly beaten. The body was found deceased inside this trailer park two weeks ago, but many questions remain about who killed him and why. My whole thing is anger is we don't have absolutely no answers, no leads. Marshall Hankinson was many things to many people, a father, a friend, and an avid skateboarder. Now, his family is desperate to find out what happened to him that fateful night. It's been ruled out that it's not suicide, was an overdose, natural causes, like all of that has been ruled out. Like it's clearly homicide, murder. Delicia Forshi is Marshall's niece. Her uncle was found on the floor of his bedroom Monday, September 5th in a pool of blood. The Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office isn't saying Hankinson was murdered, but they are saying his death is suspicious. The sheriff tells MTN several items from the scene have been sent to the crime lab. But as police investigate, Hankinson's family waits for answers. As time passes, they're growing more frustrated. So it's definitely breaking the family apart because rumors are, so many rumors are going around saying that it was you, it was you, it was you, but family's kind of a mess. The family believes the killer was likely someone close to the family, but say they're still waiting to hear how Hankinson died. We just want answers and it to be put out there. Like, honestly, at this point, we kind of just like, just at least want the cause of death. The family has taken to social media with the hashtag Justice for Marshall to share their story in hopes someone will come forward with information. The family's kind of just, I guess, not exactly giving up, but we're just very disappointed how there's no leads. None of it makes any sense. The family wants answers and aren't giving up yet. In Lockwood, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Well, now we'll bring in meteorologist Matthew Hidalgo with a first look at our weather. Definitely a warm one out there today, Matthew, but sounds like cooler weather coming. Yes, we are going to see some of that cool air start to filter in tonight into tomorrow. Let's take a look at some of those weekly trends across the viewing area, folks. Tomorrow shaping up to be the coolest day. Then we are going to start to see those temperatures gradually climb back up into the 60s and 70s, more round average with more chances of this precipitation. Now, folks, we are getting one step closer to the end of September, which means it's time to start thinking about October. 
Here is your October temperature outlook, trending warmer than average. Let's zoom down to our region, folks. We are looking at temperatures starting to be a bit warmer. Stick around. I'll tell you more about it with the full forecast details coming up here in just a little bit. A final tribute to Queen Elizabeth II today as she was laid to rest this morning with a historic funeral at Westminster Abbey. That solemn service honoring the Queen's 70 years on the throne drew presidents, kings, and tens of thousands of people lining the streets of London. Queen Elizabeth's coffin was carried into Westminster Abbey with members of the royal family, including King Charles III following close behind. The funeral was actually planned by the Queen, nearly every detail mapped out in advance, including the songs and all the readings. Queen Elizabeth II now joins her late husband, Prince Philip, at St. George's Chapel, their final resting place. Well, after nearly 70 years in business, the Billink Petroleum Club, high atop the Doubletree Hotel, has closed its doors for good. The closure of the restaurant and event venue has left some absolutely crushed, now scrambling to find another location to hold their big day. Q2's Haley Monaco has that story. Planning a wedding can be both a magical and stressful time in your life. But imagine you're just 19 days away from your wedding and you just found out the Petroleum Club here at the Doubletree just permanently shut down. And that was your wedding venue. A year of planning has just gone down the drain. Kat Kugler and her husband Fabian live in Germany. They got married there in March, but were planning a ceremony in front of family and friends on October 8th, overlooking the city. They booked the venue over a year ago. This was the full ceremony, white dress and everything. This was going to be, you know, I guess my dream wedding. But that dream is now a nightmare. The Kuglers found out last Wednesday that the Petroleum Club was closing for good. A last second twist, not just for this couple, but also their 75 guests. Seven of them are traveling here from Germany. To have that ripped away from me was one of the hardest parts of this whole wedding. The now former president of the Petroleum Club tells MTN they are working with all of their scheduled clients and the hotel group to help them still possibly utilize the space for their events. Management staff provided us this statement saying, quote, after 68 wonderful years serving the Billings community and surrounding area, so many memorable events, and a myriad of incredible weddings, the Billings Petroleum Club's time has come to a close. Nothing prepares you for someone telling you your dream wedding cannot happen. Uh, you have to settle for something that you never wanted. Kugler got all of her deposit back, but is still searching for a new venue. She's hopeful she will find one in the next few days. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. That same feeling you get from God in your, in your soul, that calmness that you don't have to worry about everything because he's got your back, you know. Healing through horses. We'll tell you how equine therapy is now helping students at MSUB. And coming up in sports from a pick six to showing some hops, we've got the best plays from the weekend that was. Game Changers is coming up in just a bit. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.